Hello, I'm Sil, and this is part eight of my video series, The Best Way to Learn English. Now, in the last video, part seven, I talked about how the um, I talked about the importance of input. Um, there were two things that I focused on. One is that you should be getting a lot of input. I mean, a lot, a ton of input compared to your output. Um, many students focus on uh, speaking only, but they don't have enough input, so they never really learn how to say what they want to say. They Maybe they've never heard it before, or maybe they've only heard it one time or two times, but that's not enough. You need to be hearing the same types of things over and over again in different situations for your brain to really understand uh, its, you know, its nuances and how it should be used and when it should be used and with whom it should be used, etc. So getting input is really, 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 really important and also, the type of input. Uh, some students, actually many students, uh, spend much too much time doing lessons and lessons and more lessons and they never actually use what they know. And when I say use, I mean both input and output. Speaking is, or speaking and writing is output. Listening and reading uh, is input. And a lot of students spend almost no time getting um, the right kind of input. Well, most students spend no time getting enough input, and also the input that they do get is the wrong type. Some students spend all of their time with input on lessons. They're reading textbooks, they're reading grammar books, they're reading dictionaries, and that's fine for a little bit of the time, maybe 10% or 15%, but it's not uh, good enough. It's not going to really help you. What is going to help you is real, meaningful English that is used for communicating something and something you're interested in or something that you need. So now in this video, um, maybe you're asking yourself, uh, what kind of input? Well, coincidentally, <laughs> that's what I have here. Um, okay, so this video is about how to get good input. Now, when I mean what, what I mean by good input uh, is something that is interesting and something that is good for you, uh, that will help you uh, learn English on a much higher level beyond what the textbook can teach you. Um, but on the other hand, if it's too difficult for you, then maybe uh, you'll give up easily. So uh, here are some ideas on how you can get started in building your vocabulary and your grammar skills by getting a lot of the right type of input that is useful and interesting. Okay, uh, the first one, children's books. Um, that's an idea. Um, you can go to the bookstore and find some books that are written for young children, maybe uh, some bedtime stories. Although, if you're watching this video and you understand what I'm saying, uh, that might be a little too low level for you. So look around the bookstore uh, look at the different books and try to find one that is uh, challenging for you, but um, but not too easy. Um, you want something that's about your level. Now, one thing about children's books, uh, when I started learning Japanese, uh, I moved to Japan and um, I read, you know, my first book was a textbook great. I learned some basic grammar, some basic vocabulary, and that was wonderful. Uh, if my friends spoke to me extremely slowly, then I could 
uh, practice my Japanese. However, I knew that I needed a lot of input to practice my listening, to get to know it. And I didn't want to do it all with drills um, and textbooks because that's just boring. But not only is it boring, it's also not very useful. I'm not going to remember uh, these things as well because I'm not interested in the content. So uh, anyway, I tried watching TV and that was too fast, uh, too high level. The vocabulary was uh, too high level. Um, the grammar was too difficult. I couldn't follow it. And uh, so I didn't know what to do. I couldn't read the newspaper. That was much too difficult all those characters that I couldn't read. Um, so I asked some people, I said, hey, what should I do? And one suggestion was children's books. I thought, hey, great idea. Okay. Um, so I bought two or three children's books and I opened the first one. And before I got to page three, I was already sleeping because I was so bored with the story. The Japanese level was at my level, you know, they were flower and table and using simple words, simple grammar, a few words I had to look in the dictionary uh, to find the definition, which is good. I'm learning new vocabulary. Uh, but the story is written for young children and I wasn't interested in it at all. I didn't care about the story. So I fell asleep. I was bored. I closed that book and I never opened it again. It's then that I had the idea many, many years ago for something like this, this YouTube channel where I'm speaking in slow, easy English. I, at that time, I remember thinking, I wish there was something on TV or a book or a magazine that was in, in easy Japanese, but where the topic was for adults, something that might interest me. So I would watch this or I would read it for the information, for the content, for the story, because it's interesting or because I need it. I don't want to do something that I'm not interested in or that I don't need because that is just more studying and it doesn't help me. So that's where I had this idea. And, uh, and so if, if you're like me, the children's book idea uh, is not going to be very helpful because you'll be bored and you won't enjoy reading those stories. If you do enjoy reading those stories, great, do it. Uh, Read them, learn some vocabulary, and pretty soon you'll have enough to go to the next step in English. But if you're like me, that's not really a great idea. So um, my next idea here is comics, okay? This is pretty good. Uh, it's reading, so it's, you know, there, you don't have to worry about speed. You can go at your own pace. Um, and the good thing about comics is that there are all the pictures that help you understand the story, right? Uh, if you're reading a novel, there are no pictures to help you understand what's being said and, what's, uh, and what the story is about. You have to look up every word that you don't understand in the dictionary. Uh, with comics, even if you don't understand some words, you can probably still imagine from the pictures what those words mean. So comics are a good way of studying and learning English and using it if you're interested in the story. If you're not interested in comics, don't do it. Um, you can do it, but that's studying. That's not using if you're not interested. Uh, if you are interested, and you're motivated to understand the story, uh, then that's using English, okay? My third idea uh, is 
something that I recommend everybody should do. Slow, easy English news, plus all the other videos that I have on my website. Uh, so far, I think I have over 250 videos. Uh, that's a lot of English input for you. And like I said, I had this idea many years ago um, about uh, you know content that was interesting for adults, but where the language level was a little bit lower and understandable for students who are not advanced. So uh, that's why I made this channel, was so that people could get a lot of input um, that is uh, challenging, but not too difficult, um, not too easy. And so if you're at this level where you are watching this, um, probably it's ideal for you. So um, Slow Easy English News is a great way to get input because I talk about real news. It's not fake. It's not just for you to practice listening. You're actually listening for the content, for the news. If this was in your native language, you would still want to hear the news, right? So all we're doing here is we're changing the language to English so that you can at the same time improve and learn new English. You can improve your English and learn new English, okay? So um, the other thing too, uh, remember in the last video, a lot of input. So um, don't stop at one video. You know, one video is one minute, two minutes maybe. Um, that's not a lot, okay? So if you can, if you have time, watch all the videos that I put up. Um, and uh, well, if you're interested in the news, <laughs> Uh, watch all of them, okay? And, you know, even if you're not interested in everything, it's good to force yourself to watch the other videos a little bit anyway, uh, so that you can get a variety of different stories, different English, okay? So, um, if, you're, if you're interested in news, that is a great way to get more English input. Um, again, don't, you know, you don't want to stick with only one type of English. This is news English, so uh, it's great, but you should try to get a variety of English, you know, comic books, the news, and other things. My next suggestion is context-rich video. Here I'm talking about uh, TV shows and movies and YouTube videos anything, which are context rich. What I mean by this is if you're watching a TV show or a movie where it's mainly just two people sitting in a coffee shop and talking, there's no context, there's no, there's no images and there's no actions that help you understand the words better. So there's no context, or it's not no context, but it's very little context. What you'd like the best is to get something that has a lot of context. So, uh, for example, action movies. Action movies don't have a lot of words, and there's a lot of context. Uh, in an action movie, uh, maybe somebody is walking into a street and there's a car coming and somebody says, hey, watch out! And then the other person goes, whoa! You know, and gets out of the way of the car. You don't need a dictionary to help you understand that, hey, watch out! That means there's a car coming. Get out of the way. That's a very high context situation. So um, it's a, it's a context-rich situation. So that kind of movie is a great thing to use um, that will help you build your English skills and your grammar and uh, learning new vocabulary, all of it. And, uh, and that, so, so action movies are a good start. Um, some TV shows 
have a lot of everyday situations. Um, you know, the police shows, they have police stuff. It's all police stuff. This will help you a little bit, but not that much. It's not going to help you with how a family would talk to each other at home, for example, or how friends would talk to each other in normal situations, going to a movie or going on a date or going to a party. All of these situations, um, you don't have many in a police show. So instead of watching a police show, try watching uh, dramas, dramas or maybe light comedies. Um, comedy can be difficult though, so be careful. Um, one good one is uh, a TV show called Modern Family. It's a comedy, there are a lot of jokes, but they're not usually very difficult jokes. Um, so that might be a good show. It's centered around a family, and so there are a lot of everyday situations which will give you a lot of context. Um, but again, humor is very difficult, so as a first step, you might try something like, I don't know, 90210. Um, I don't watch it, so I don't know, but I know that the setting is, what, school and home mainly, maybe at work as well. Um, these situations are very good for you to learn what types of expressions people use, um, how they say things, how they talk to maybe their friend or their parents or their boss because we we talk you know we, we say things differently depending on who we are talking to so uh, that's a good show um, so yeah let, try to keep the video that you watch context rich okay where the actions and the setting help you understand the words okay do that and um, and you'll be good to go. Um, the next suggestion that I have is use the internet, the web. Okay, the the web has a lot of great stuff for you, um, and stuff that's really actually interesting. Stuff that you probably already do today in your own language. Just switch it to English. For example. Um, menus. Have you ever looked on the internet for a restaurant? If you have, do it in English. Um, look for a restaurant using English language, uh, using maybe a travel site. They probably have reviews on a restaurant near you, even in your country, that is maybe not English speaking, but the website is for English travelers and they might have some information about some restaurants near your house all in English so you can use that um, flyers sometimes uh, some shops uh, have flyers like you know weekly flyers up on the internet you can look at those um, if you live in uh, an English-speaking country like the United States or Canada, then that's great. You'll probably find a lot of these. If you don't live in an English-speaking country, um, I guess the information is not really relevant to you, but you can still use it to study vocabulary. Um, stores. Use store websites. Things like, for example, uh, if you are interested in learning a lot of furniture names, check out IKEA. You know, do a search IKEA. It's probably IKEA.com, but uh, find the IKEA website. Go there. Look at all the stuff. I mean, even if you don't shop at IKEA, you can still find the names of a lot of different furniture pieces. So uh, it's a good way of studying. Um, if you can use IKEA, the IKEA website, for real, then it's great. It's not just studying, but it's actually using the English, right? Um, but even if you can't use it, it's a, it's a great way to study. Uh, much better than textbooks. 
Sears. Sears is a large department store um, in the United States and Canada. I don't know about other countries, uh, but it's a department store. They, Ikea has only furniture. Sears has many things. Furniture, clothes, automotive parts, sporting goods, uh, all kinds of things. So Sears is a great website to learn the words for many, 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 many items that you have at home right now. AutoZone for auto parts. Best Buy for electronics, maybe TV, stereo, computer, camera, camcorder. Home Depot, that's a, a large hardware store chain in the United States. Um, you could use that to learn about you know, building materials and uh, renovation materials for your home. H&M, an international clothing company, uh, clothing store. So if you want to learn about clothes, check out H&M or maybe Zara also, another clothing company. Uh, Outback is an international restaurant. You might have one in your city. So that's a real website that you can use for real information to really go to that restaurant. Um, Hard Rock Cafe, another restaurant. And, you know, don't be afraid to use Google. Google is your friend. <laughs> you can use Google, do a search, right? Uh, restaurant, I mean, let's say you live in, I don't know, wherever, Rome, okay? Uh, do a Google search. Restaurants, Rome. You do that search in English and you should get a lot of results in English. Uh, so any topic that you're interested in, I'm sure there's probably a, a business website that can teach you a lot of vocabulary um, for that topic. Another uh, idea is recipe sites, okay? Everybody needs to cook. If you don't cook, you really should learn how to cook. Come on. Um, so, if you <laughs> yeah, if you don't cook, you probably should learn how to cook a few things anyway, right? Um, use recipe sites, you know, Go to Google again, do recipe, uh, chicken, uh, and then hit enter. You'll get a lot of recipe sites that you can go to and look at different recipes. Uh, try one, you know, choose one that you think looks very good and try to use this recipe. Do not translate to your language, okay? Don't do that. Just Use the dictionary if there are words that you don't understand, yes, but don't translate everything using a web translator. Those are no good. Don't use them. Uh, just try to follow it in English. And that is using English because what you're doing is you're making the food, you're making the recipe, you're, you're following the recipe to make a dish. You're not just studying English that you're not interested in or that you don't need, right? So this is perhaps one of the best ways. No, it's not one of, I'm sorry, it's not one of. It is the best way to uh, learn English. It's by actually using the English in a meaningful way. Even if it's just input, that's okay. If you can get input and output, that's even better. Yes, but you do need a lot of input, a lot of input. So, um, so do that. Try to, uh, try to do that as much as you can. And um, there you go. I guess that's all I have to say. <laughs> it's, uh, I think it's clear what the message of this video is. So, Good luck. Uh, try to do as many of these as you can. Remember, try to do many of them, not just one. You know, if you watch the news, great. That makes me happy. But try using English in other situations. The recipes, uh, you know, whatever. Watching movies and TV shows and comics and 
all kinds, as much input as you possibly can. That is how you will learn great English. Listening, reading, speaking, and writing. They're all connected. You can't just practice one. They're all connected and they all help each other. But one thing that is for sure, if you don't have enough input, your output will never get very good. Okay? So, um, so please use these uh, methods for getting good, real, interesting input. And I will, uh, in my next video, I'm going to give you more information about how you can, um, how, how you can get even better input or more good input and also use the output that you have, you know, in your head to bring that English out and express yourself. So I will see you in part nine very soon. Thank you for joining me. And uh, if you like this video, please, please click the like button and share the video with other people who could use it. Other people who want to learn English and would probably find this advice valuable. So thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye.